Hi guys, welcome back to UK Year We Grow. As you can see on the right, we have uh, Peter Edwards. He's uh, been on his little hauls today, or last couple of days, up the Brecon Beacons and has decided to pop in and say hello. So at the moment, his son Roy is sat in my living room playing hell with my, my little <laughs> son on a PS4. And, uh, and Peter's come over to have a look at the plots. So Peter, what do you think of them? Brilliant, mate, brilliant. Couldn't, couldn't pay a visit to Wales without coming to see Tony and, and what he's been doing. Um, we're sat on the fruit plot now, and it's all uh, it's a beautiful 100 yards from his house. Can't get much better. I'm seriously considering moving. <laughs> not not here, but, but well, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm my own stalker, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. You guys know uh, we had a lot of problems at the old plot, and Peter knows even more than some of you. But um, uh, it, I can't beat literally the house is just across the road so um it does make being over here much easier especially now as the nights are starting to close in um you know we all know that it's hard to get to the plot especially after work i don't finish till six o'clock sometimes so the time i come home it's, it's dark yeah like, you know? yeah um so how has your plot got on this year mate the plot's been a bit of a disaster this year um i managed to get potatoes a uh, good good crop of onions red and and whites from sets better than me then <laughs> yeah <laughs> I picked them myself um, and I managed to get the two raspberry beds in um, and the strawberry bed but the, the strawberry bed's been rubbish because I think the muck I brought on last year has um, a load of weeds in it and it's just taken all the energy but I'd had two strawberries all year from about 30 plants yeah, do so. you know and we found that with the strawberries this year we didn't have great strawberries um, not like we normally do in our three tier beds but that was because we moved one to this plot and we decided to get all brand new uh, plants for it this year and they came late in fact they didn't come till gone April so they didn't get a chance to no. to get going but as you can see um, the strawberries now you know they've uh, put out tons and tons of runners you can't even see the definition between the three tiers now it's just one big huge mound yeah, yeah. so I've got to get in there and thin that out um, but um, as you guys can see you know they, they've taken on well so next year we'll have a really good crop of strawberries um, and the raspberries next to them, they need to be cut right back now and we need to get some posts in to support those. But um, what's your overall impression of all the plots up here? It's, I was just saying to Tony, I'm looking around, I cannot see one vacant plot. The whole the whole thing's taken. Tony's obviously got this one and a couple of others up there with have just seen the famous polytunnel. Um, and yeah, it's this is a really nice allotment site. It's um, on a bit of a hill. It's this this one, like I said to you, similar to Aaron's. Yeah. Uh, maybe even a little bit steeper. But um, the way you've tiered it up just makes it so much easier to work. Yeah, because you're always working on a flat level, and that's really important, guys. And Aaron, if you're watching, maybe, you know, if you're finding a, the slope a problem, um, just get a couple of boards, put them in, and then bank it off so that it's nice and flat, mate. It'll, it will make working on it a lot easier and save your back. I didn't realise your plot was... Um, was on a slope as uh, like this fruit one is and uh, until Peter came down and said so today so if you're watching Aaron you know and you are having problems on the slope Peter will tell you first and you now he's walked across this it, you know having those flat areas really does make a difference when you're working for your back and everything else and not just that for water runoff and and soil erosion and things like that you know so uh, maybe something to think about there mm. And uh, what's it? Fully woody, ch fully wood chipped up as well. Yeah, this. And, just... and and again, a mulch. We've 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 done loads of episodes on mulch and things like that. Um, this this plot is away from the other three that we have. And um, the last thing you, I want to be doing is coming down here, spending all my time weeding between the trees and the bushes and this, that, and the other. The wood chip. Um, uh, on on most of the beds makes a big difference. Now, just under the wood chip, guys there's a layer of actually manure and soil so and uh, and it's so good as well it's and it's nice and wet yeah mm. exactly it makes it makes a great thing i am going to worry about coming down here and and watering and things like that although we have got the ibc just up around the corner by here at the top of the plot um these pretty much look after themselves now even the strawberries you know you can see how, how well they've they've done this year as far as bulking out in in plants and they've come really well um, the raspberries didn't take kindly to be moved, but they've pulled back, and we have had a crop off them, so that's the main thing. But, my, uh, my raspberries were, I had one lot from my former boss, which took really well, shot up throughout lots of strawberries at the top, though, um, only on the tops of the plant. And yeah. then I also bought some tullamine from the Edible Garden Show last year. Yeah. 
they haven't fruited at all well what well, one had one bunch fruited and i was quite impressed because it was a good 50 p size um raspberry yes. but um just waiting for all the foliage to die off and cut them back yeah i think with raspberries as well guys you know a, a ph of soil really plays a part they will run forever and you will find them popping up all over the place if you don't control them and i'm going to put a link to brian's video just up in the corner here because he done a really good video using some old slate off somebody's roof where he actually is able to contain that and i know that's worked really well for brian so if you're worrying out uh, worrying about where your um raspberries will go and run and pop up and this and the other and you want to contain them have a look at that link because it is really worth it um what are your plans for next year then concentrate more on the allotment i spent too much time concentrating on the show vegetables this year um and pretty much since the show on the last weekend of august i haven't really done anything i've kind of gone oh god that's over <laughs> so i'm still going to do the show stuff next year but the, the but yeah. telling tony I've, I've been down the allotment on monday dressed all the edges i'm just going to weed kill the lot and start again um I say I brought a lot of weeds in last year. Um, I'm not going to make that mis mistake again. I think I'm going to go for some areas of mulch, yeah, um, and then the rest of it I might even just dig, dig the top six inches off. And that's the one thing, guys, with uh, when you bring in in animal manures, uh, you know, they they may have had uh, some sort of seed uh, brought in or even fed to the to the cows or horses and what have you that may germinate and what have you. Um, but there are other ways to manure your plot. Now, but if you are using animal manure, it's, it is really good if you actually dig a trench and bury that manure. It finishes composting in the trench and it still gives the soil the actual um, organic matter and nutrients that it requires. Okay, And this is what I've just been showing Peter now at the old plot, uh, at the, um, up on the new plots, is the, the compactation that you get if you haven't got that organic matter in it. And you've seen the difference between one side of the plot that I've had this year and the other side of the plot which I'm getting at the end of this year yeah so um, we were talking about green manure um, and uh, I've already spoken to Peter about like the hairy vetch that I'm using and the field beans we're using two types this year now um, they're already through the ground and uh, we're gonna go have a video coming up very shortly and and we'll talk to you about that more in later weeks as, as we get around to doing it at the moment we've got loads of video that I still need to edit for you guys but what I wanted to say about green manures okay there, there are various others uh, to use but the hairy vetch and the field beans they do a lot of good for your ground they pump in nitrogen into your ground all winter long okay they're building when they grow they, they the roots take on nodules like any other legume okay and those nodules hold nitrogen and that's the really important factor here you want to hold that nitrogen rather than it leaching out of the ground through the winter when they hold that nitrogen, okay, that plant then can release that nitrogen when you cut it down in the spring and then turn that into the ground, okay, it adds organic matter and the nitrogen becomes available. It breaks down over the next few weeks then and becomes available back in the ground to the plants at the root area where the plants need it. So it's really good for that, okay. Buying in nitrogen is really expensive now, okay, so um, it's, it's getting to the point where we need to be looking after our, our ground a lot better. But the other thing it does as well is it um, stops all the erosion through the winter. Okay, when you when you know when winter hits, when rain hits the ground, it's compacting the ground constantly, and you can cover it over with plastic sheeting or um, membrane or anything like that. But the problem is then that harbors all of the it keeps a warm area underneath. It harbors all the bugs and the slug eggs and everything else. And this year, I know people have had massive issues with um, slugs because it's been damp, humid, and it's a perfect environment. And we had a really mild win winter as well. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, one of the next videos, it might be the video after this one, um, we have um, a video for slug uh, nematodes, how to actually make your own. Um, I'm just in the middle of editing that one as well. So there's loads of stuff coming up, but keep your eyes open for that because that'll be well worth looking at. Have you used the nematodes down here then? I use the nematodes up in the brassica bed. Right. Um, and as you notice, there's no slug damage in there at all. No, no. And um, 
uh, but I haven't used it on these grounds. But I, what I will be doing in the spring, I'll be collecting all the slugs. And if you guys follow the uh, video as well, you can do this yourself. And I'll be making all my own nematodes next year. And everything is going to get doses of nematodes every six to eight weeks. Oh, right. And what that does, um, it puts nematodes into the ground, into the soil area where the slugs are. And they hunt out the slugs. Okay. And they then enter the slug through the breathing um, hole that they have and they usually go to the area where the saddle is on the slug and this is how you can tell if a slug's infected with nematodes if you see a raised saddle or an inflamed saddle that's usually a sign that they're infected with nematodes and uh, in there it releases bacteria that is picked up from the soil and that kills the slug mm. and that's how they work in effect and um, they're very very good for managing populations of slugs I've not had any damage at all on brassicas this year all because I've used those nematodes. Now you can buy them like nema slug and things like that, but to do any sort of size of plot, it's You've expensive. got to keep reapplying them haven't every you? six to eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think but, I, I looked at them in the Edible Garden show, and I yeah. to do just my back garden, which was four beds. I think it was about 30, 34 pounds. Yeah, it's it's really. You know, don't get like, me wrong. If you've got a small bed and you want to do that, it's a fantastic way of of doing it because um, they have nematodes. Nema slug is a, a product that uh, has millions of nematodes and it's all held in clay and when you put that clay into water it releases those nematodes and then you can just water it onto your plants that's great but we're on an allotment you guys and i know a lot of you are as well and you have access to thousands and thousands of slugs make those slugs work for you and that's all i can suggest you doing um a lot of people now are, are gardening organically like I try to and um, you have to things like slugs are like the number one pest on an allotment and you have to find ways to combat them that doesn't break the bank because when it starts costing you money it doesn't become viable in order to, to feed your family and everything else and ultimately that's what we're all doing here so um, that video is coming up anyway on the slugs um, what else are you looking at next year? Um, what am I going to do next year? I'm going to try a giant marrow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try the pumpkin again, which this got about. I'll give you some seeds later eaten. for the marrow. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, after seeing those ones at Malvern a couple of weeks ago, just got to have a go. Just, just growing something even half as big as that. I'll put a link for the Malvern video here, guys. Um, you can have a look at them for yourself. Brilliant. I've never seen anything like it. It was like walking onto a film set, and they looked like props. They were so perfect and shiny, but also so big they just didn't look like they could be marrows they were huge weren't yeah, they they're massive um and and I, I think that's something that we're going to be doing next year as well um and we're going to be doing a bit of cross breeding as far as our marrows go um and uh, seeing if we can create something much bigger i want to be looking my goal for next year is 120 pound plus so um so that is what we're doing and the work for that has already started with this green manure guys mm. um uh, peter will tell you the plots are spotless aren't they yeah there's there's oh, not I'm a weed on any of them i'm embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> but i just took <laughs> peter to the old plots and um uh, peter's away but i've had a few issues up, up there over the last few weeks and i haven't been able to go to the old plots to look after the chickens and they've had i've had someone else feeding them for me and what have you but that's all done and dusted now but i took peter up there and he's seen the state of the old plots that haven't been grown on now and they're about eight feet high in weed yeah it's massive. absolutely crazy can't even see the beds no. they're all still there and that's the thing the beds are still here but it's just all full of weed and the reason for that guys is because I, co I was constantly on it you know when you look back at some of the older videos you'll see how pristine that plot was and it's like this plot it was yeah. always clean yeah. and spotless and what have you and um but i was constantly there pulling any weeds that came through and what have you but it just shows in one season i haven't been there and it's like i like no one's ever grown on it. it's like waste ground it's again isn't it? yeah it's, it's unbelievable yeah. just walking through complete grass and, and Tony's the only one who was growing down there. It seems like everybody else has just turned it into chicken pens and poultry areas. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, right. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so I took Peter Edwards, guys, over to, um, over to see the land for the bee project this morning. What do you think of it? Um, well, like UK, here we grow. UK, that gives you the idea of how big it is compared to uh, a normal allotment. It's a massive undertaking. Yeah, it is huge, massive. And, but I am I am quite committed into um, 
making that an educational school, if you like, for children to be able to come to learn about beekeeping, maybe poultry keeping. And we may even grow some of the marrows and things like that up there. So, um, but I do want it to become an educational place. By the way, guys, if any of you out there are, um, own a business or anything like that, that may be able to help with materials and, and, and things like that, please get in touch because we're always looking for sponsorship for, for, for that, or we will be looking for sponsorship for that project um, because it is, Peter will tell you, it is massive and it's going to take a lot of money and product in which to actually get that to fruition. Um, it is something that I'll be contacting the lottery and things like that about because obviously I'm only a firefighter and I don't know if you guys know, but we don't get paid a lot. So, um, uh, but you know, like I said, you know, it's something I want to do for, for children to be able to bring, you know, and they can bring a busload of kids there and we can have a day and, or even a few hours just talking to them, tell them exactly on how they can sort of raise bees, the importance of them, and, and same thing with poultry. I think kids don't know where their food comes from these days, yeah. and it's really imperative that yeah. they learn. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I confirmed that's something Tony's massively passionate about. There's the area just over the back here that he's prepared for the schools. They've got their own their own polytunnel, their own seating area. You've got your, your bee area over there, yeah. where you've got all your bees from. Yeah, I mean, the guys here, uh, you know, Pierre and, and what have you, you done a lot of fundraising and in order to build these places and it's fantastic that 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 this allotment now has those and the schools come here constantly and and what have you but i don't think that you know just one allotment is is the answer we need to get this out in, into a, into the bigger wider mm -hmm. community and um the b place will be somewhere that a school can come on a day trip if you like um and I'll be putting in my time and, and everything else free of charge for that. Um, yeah, I love you know, that. I and, love it. Uh, and I, it's just there to educate those children, you know. And maybe they can test the hunt, you know, taste the honey and, and things like that, you know. And, and that's what it's about, is getting them out there and learning about something so that maybe later on we'll pick up a new generation of beekeepers, poultry keepers, gardeners. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important. Get them out uh, away from the PS4s, although that's where they, they that's sat where at the they moment. That's where they are now, yeah. Um, yeah. But... We try to get them out, you know, at the plot as much as we can and, and gardening and doing things. They're taking in fresh air and they're learning and that's the main thing. We've got to teach them ready for when my back gives up and your knees finally give way. <laughs> yeah. We need someone to dig our plots yeah. for us, even if we have got all this mulch. <laughs> yeah, eventually we, the, the mulch needs topping up. You yeah, know? yeah. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, guys, um, Peter's come here. He hasn't actually said a lot. <laughs> no, no, just... Massive thanks to Tony for just letting me come in, seeing hospitality and cup of tea and walking around his plot. You know, it's not everybody's ideal idea of a, of a holiday, but Roy's happy enough because he's playing Minecraft with Wayne and yeah. they found some of Wayne's toy guns five minutes after he walked through the door. So Yeah, it was like World War Three yeah. happening in the house. Yeah. So we quickly left three kids with <laughs> Tina and we came over the Cheers, plot. Cheers, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, she's been got his goal. We've got family due up now in a probably in about half an hour so we're gonna end this in a moment but um I, I, we've got family up um so she's been running around the house like a lunatic trying to clean and and everything else not the house was a mess anyway while well, the uh, children are behind making it well, more messy yeah, yeah while the yeah. children are running behind her and doing any work she's already done so anyway guys um i hope you've enjoyed peter coming and having a chat it's uh, been a pleasure taking him around and and uh, chatting with him and taking him to see the new sites and things like that and the old ones um, but um, like I said we've got loads and loads and loads of videos coming so stay tuned and if you haven't already guys hit this subscribe button that's right below us by here you know this big long one here make sure you hit it because it's really really important that uh, you know that you hit that because otherwise you're never gonna know when we put another video up anyway guys loads coming see you very soon bye